Sith sabers are red. Obi-Wan's is blue. You suck at Star Wars, Disney. So screw you. According to my calculations, Star Wars has reached zero in the Kelvin scale of crapness, when all the joy and entertainment disappears and all you're left with is the cold terror as you watch the evil empire, run by a mouse, violating your nostalgia. My expectations were so low <laughs> that I was actually pleasantly surprised at first. It didn't seem that bad. Obi-Wan is my favorite character, and Ewan McGregor still got it, I have to admit it. For a second, a split second, it was a great feeling to see these characters in places again, because I haven't consumed any Star Wars content since The Last Jedi. Except for the Clone Wars finale, but that doesn't count. However, it didn't take long for me to think it over, and then realize, no, actually, this is complete garbage. And it's not for the reasons you might be thinking. The ideological stuff in the show is present, but it's not as ham-fisted as I thought it was going to be. It's all pretty standard, nothing that is too bad. You have these strong women of color, but they made her into a bad guy in this, which was unexpected. You'd think a character like this would be a preachy hero type lecturing me about society's problems, but no. And Moses Ingram is a good actress. Unfortunately, they gave her a terrible dialogue. And you also have the standard tomboy princess girl who doesn't conform to gender roles, and yet she's still kind and feminine in her virtues, which was nice. And the main male character is struggling a little too much and he is kind of humiliated, but not as much as I thought it was gonna be, and I expect him to bounce back by the end of the series. All in all, if the show came out in the 90s or early 2000s, we wouldn't really think twice about these elements since they've been around since forever. We cringe now because all of this nonsense has gotten too aggressive and it's no longer about just having certain strong character types anymore, but it's about tearing down and replacing beloved characters that built the franchise in the first place. And it's happening so often that every time we see just a glimpse of a strong woman, we go like, oh shit, shit, she's gonna beat the shit out of the main character and replace him by the end, isn't she? Which is a shame. I mean, why are you making me dread these characters? You know, it's your fault, Hollywood. Be better. But here, it actually seems like a deceleration of the ideological fervor. Obi-Wan is less pathetic than uh, Soy Walker, at least. And at no point I saw a gender studies professor walking around trying to lecture the testosterone junkie on why he's the problem. Or a flawless female with no training miraculously kicking ass. This is annoying when it happens to male characters too. It's that the ideology affects the writing most of the times. It's not that we have a problem with strong female characters or anything like that. Just look at Ashoka Tano. She's great. Disney hasn't made any character like her thus far. This means that the real problem is the writing. Especially here in Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I can prove it. Senator Organa asking Obi-Wan Kenobi, and worse, going personally to Obi-Wan Kenobi's Taliban cave to ask him to save his daughter is unbearably retarded, and it ruined the whole show. Because this single moment is what initiates the entire plot, and it sets the tone, and it launches a cascade effect that affects the entire story. And when it's based on a foundation more shaky than Hollywood's common sense, there's no way that these subsequent episodes are going to be any good. This single moment is so inconceivably bad. It would be the equivalent of, and I kid you not, an American senator going to a cave somewhere to meet Bin Laden. Old Binny, my friend, please go save my kidnapped child. We used to fight the Soviets together. We have history. What are you crazy? I'm way too old. I'm not even in my prime and I'm the most wanted man in the world by the most powerful country in history, you spastic lunatic. I draw more harm to your kid just by showing up. And what will happen if I'm seen hanging around her asshole? You'll get your ass sent to Guantanamo Bay, shithead. And why did you come here to see me? If they know about your past with me, then they, then they had you followed. Yeehaw! We got him, boys! Fire! Oh no, it's the Power Rangers! No, I think they're Navy SEALs. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that the USA is the moral equivalent of the Star Wars Empire, other than maybe California. And I'm not saying that Obi-Wan Kenobi is the moral equivalent to this absolute monster of a historical figure. Unfortunately, this was the only real-world example I could conceive of to prove to you just how unbelievably retarded this plot moment was from a strategic perspective. And it's even more retarded when you consider that the Empire is actually evil, and they'd execute Organa's entire freaking family and their servants in public 
down to the seventh generation. Just by associating with the Jedi who literally made Anakin's Ken doll face look like space scrotum. Especially since Senator Organa is a known critic of imperial policies and a genuine political obstacle to Palpatine's agenda in the first place. This would be the perfect opportunity to get rid of him. And why was getting the most wanted man in the galaxy involved so essential in the first place? All Obi-Wan did was question a con man and beat up like three guys. That's it. All the trouble that came later was compounded by the fact that it was Obi-Wan running around. And they were after him at that point and not Leia. It would have been over in three seconds if it was literally any other competent fighter. And don't give me that, oh, Obi-Wan, I can't trust anyone else crap. Buddy, if you can't trust anyone else for the safety of your family, then how in George Lucas's scraggly beard are you in power? You're telling me an imperial senator and reigning monarch doesn't have trustworthy warriors guarding his family and that they can't be sent to beat up three stooges? Apparently not, since Leia was kidnapped by, what, a space motorcycle gang or whatever the heck those guys were? And any Mandalorian could have been hired to do what Kenobi did. And they'd probably be even better because then the most powerful military in the universe wouldn't be mobilized to capture the fugitive prancing around generic sci-fiopolis with the princess. And not to mention, that dude hasn't fought in what, 10 years? Also, aren't the Mandalorians famous for their reliableness as hired warriors? They're even good with kids, right? Apparently. And that's the point. They forced Obi-Wan into this contrived plot on purpose, all to rip off the Mandalorian, with the whole old warrior traveling the galaxy with a child shtick. Star Wars stories are all run by committee, and they have a checkmark sheet of story beats or a list of tropes that they pull out of a Mickey Mouse cap filled with the blood of sacrificed child actors or some shit. And then they just recycle the same story beats over and over and over again. The broken, disillusioned warrior who remembers his duty because of an overcompetent magic girl. The annoying one be Sith Lord. Extra points if she's a woman of color. Life as a lowly worker in a desert planet. And the Empire running around hunting rebels. To this day, Disney hasn't been able to give us another setting, even when they should have, like in the sequels. It's always with the Empire. Give me some bloody creativity. There's no passion here at all. People act like Leia is annoying when she runs away from Obi-Wan, but no, no, I'm on her side. Because I know what she's thinking. She's all like, my daddy wouldn't send a fugitive to come rescue me, right? He's not that retarded. An army or a crack special forces team would be what any sane politician would do to save his baby girl. I gotta stay away from this fugitive. Being around him is actually hazardous to my health. And I'm like, yeah, Leia, run, run, bust those tiny legs. You need to get out of there. She's not being annoying. She's just being clever. But the worst thing about all this is Disney's morally bankrupt behavior by hiding behind the serious issue of ethnic prejudice and blaming the audience for their shortcomings as storytellers. And they put stuff like this on Twitter. What bothers me about this is that wouldn't racist misogynist types like that the bad guy is a black woman? I mean, Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to win in the end, right? He's the good guy. So wouldn't asshole clan types be all like, yeah, Obi, kick her ass. <laughs> Horrible, I know, but you see my point, right? I have to give it to Disney though, they're very progressive to not have the bad guys be all old British white dudes walking around colonizing everyone else in the galaxy. It's like, women of color can be genocidal monsters too, don't be a bigot. Which is actually true by the way. My point is, I'm not entirely convinced that ethnic prejudice against Moses Ingram was in fact a real issue. They're not why average people are hating on the show, and why it's getting bad reviews. Black Panther was a massive success after all, so no, this cannot be the reason why Kenobi is failing. And jokes aside, Moses, the actress, did apparently receive abuse on the internet, on Instagram. And I'm glad that Ewan McGregor and others have stood up for, for her and condemned all the slurs and harmful comments that she got. But Disney as a corporation is just being very cynical about this. Listen, Miss Ingram, Disney doesn't care about you. They'd Photoshop your face away to increase sales to China. I'm sorry you got harassed online. It sucks, I know, but it's the internet. If these asshats weren't saying ethnic slurs, they'd harass you by targeting something else. You don't deserve this, but none of us do. And we all go through it. I actually think you deserve a better story than this Obi-Wan show anyway. And you deserve better dialogue for your breakout role in a major franchise. And that's what I'm advocating for. So I got your back. And I wish your acting career all the best. I actually don't mind the Reva character, 
She'd be a great foil against Obi-Wan Kenobi if this whole crap fest was written better. Because she's the young former Jedi working for the Empire, right? It would have been great to see an emotionally more secure version of Obi-Wan Kenobi interacting with her and trying to save her from the dark side to try to make up for his own failures with Anakin. And it would have been great to see her struggle emotionally as she faces Obi-Wan Kenobi, who is so noble and Jedi-like that makes her remember how good the Jedi could be. And that makes her feel an urge for the light. But ultimately, she would have to choose the darkness and fight Obi-Wan Kenobi and then be lost forever because only then would Kenobi be jaded enough for his appearance in the original trilogy and tell Luke to kick his father's ass without believing that Darth Vader could be redeemed. Reva as a character is fine. She's just terribly written, like everything else here. She fits the Star Wars universe well. As another overly ambitious and treacherous darksider, typical of Sith Empire hierarchy, she's a new original character, and her identity doesn't break away from established lore or history, which is what people normally complain about. The fans don't care about an original character of color like this. In fact, this is what should happen. Reva is fine, other than her relentlessly shitty dialogue. Though her acting was good, as was the main cast, especially Eeyore McGregor. It was great to see him as Obi-Wan again. But the minor characters? Hey guys, I realize why I prefer animation to live action these days. In animation, the acting is better. Good grief. I guess it's because all the drama teachers are too busy being politicians. Maybe Trudeau could play Reva's brother in the next season. The only reason I sat down to watch this after avoiding Star Wars since 2017 is because Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite Star Wars character. He's the GOAT. The quintessential Jedi Master. The medieval knight errand archetype mixed with the wizard archetype. What's not to love about this guy? He's awesome. Plus, he's got that sass to him, which you almost never see in noble knight types because they're too busy going on a serious and eternal quest to find their, I don't know, their personality or some shit. Though his best depiction is in the Clone Wars show by far. Nothing else comes close. The writing was fantastic in that show. They really show how the morally upright character whose lawful good doesn't have to be a boring and uh, humorless stiff kind of guy. He can be extremely witty. He could be good-natured. He can be entertaining, etc while still being a near absolute paragon of virtue, while still having some flaws and interesting personal struggles. I actually think that he was right in the original trilogy to prepare Luke to defeat Vader without complicating things too much. Maybe he was being manipulative, but not telling Luke that Vader was his father. But that guy was blowing up planets. I mean, come on. Oh, help me. We're a peaceful planet. You may fire when ready. Hold <laughs> on chunks everywhere. <laughs> Here in the show, he's different though, as you'd expect. After everyone he loved was murdered, he has become a bit broken, and he's struggling to hold on to hope. But thank heavens, he's not nearly as bad as Jake Soywalker over here. Still, as others have said, he should have gotten over it by now because it's been 10 years, and Jedi training is all about working through your emotions and peering into the great cosmic will of a benevolent force. He is a religious man who is utterly defined by his creed. His spirituality should help him cope with tragedy. We've already seen too many broken Jedi undergoing a crisis of faith. It would be nice if we saw one still strong and holding his head up high for once. If any Jedi would be able to deal with his trauma, it should be Obi-Wan Kenobi. In the end, it's an incredible shame that in an era where our favorite franchises are getting massive multi-million dollar shows and movies done about them, it's also an era where entertainment is at its most mediocre and where the Hollywood zeitgeist hates everything about these characters we grew up with. The stars aligned very crookedly for us, didn't they? But it makes sense. Hollywood would only keep revisiting classic franchises and remaking them all the time or emphasize adaptations of popular IPs if they were too creatively bankrupt to make new properties or work on something else and make new characters. And they are mediocre because they adopted an ideology that blames everything on external issues and incentivizes personal mediocrity. No, it's not that I wrote a bad story. You're just a racist. Which means it's up to us. It's very easy for us to trash talk these guys, but we should try working on our own projects. I personally got a few lined up, and you should try creating something too. With these entertainment monopolies losing money, there's going to be a window of opportunity for us little creators. And we're all hungry for good content. So let's make our own. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have written any books, did any animations, or any sort of story that we all might like to enjoy. But when it comes to Obi-Wan, they could have done so much with this guy. I disagree with the people that say that they shouldn't have tried giving him his own series. I disagree. I think this was a character who deserved his own story. 
a very good one. Maybe the story could revolve around the mystery of Tatooine itself, you know. Maybe there's like a eldritch monster somewhere in the desert, and, and Imperial Inquisitors are actually on the planet, not because of Luke or Obi-Wan, because they don't know where they are, Darth Vader doesn't even know that uh, Luke exists, but because they're trying to find this eldritch force somewhere. Because the Emperor has something in mind that he can use it for something, you know. And the, the Sand People are getting very antsy because, according to their lore, every sentient being on the planet will be destroyed once that Eldritch Force awakes. And so they are kidnapping people uh, to try to sacrifice them for the deity once it awakes to try to save themselves from it. Something like that. I don't know. Um, and maybe... Obi-Wan goes and he meets new characters on the way and he and maybe he could find some secret that has to do with Anakin's conception, his origin. We still don't know how he got born and so maybe and he was born on Tatooine, right? So if there's a, ever a place to find that out, you could easily use an Obi-Wan story to explore that rather than just rehash the same ideas. I know it's not perfect or ideal, but I think it's better than what we got. But that's just my opinion. How would you guys write an Obi-Wan Kenobi story? Now it's time for us to close up. I've been talking already for way too long. I'd like to thank my patrons, who keep me going. If any of you would like to join their ranks, I'd be most appreciative. It really helps me get these videos going and making some more animations. It's not easy to do those. Your support would very much help us keeping those going. And if you join us on Patreon, you'd get bonus content, early stuff, things of that nature. Standard Patreon stuff. Anyway, thank you all for listening to my ramblings. Have a good day, my friends.